Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Kitty Hawk and how we can submit an application in Kitty Hawk, which is actually pretty straightforward. So first you have to download the app. This is what it looks like right here. Uh, once it's downloaded, I'm not going to have you go through these steps, but then you can click on it right here and uh, it's going to ask you to log in. And once, once we're logged in, it's going to kind of figure out where you are located. So you can see that north of myself right here, north of my location, I have an airport. And that airport has green color, red color, orange color, yellow colors. And that's your grid. That's your grid from the, the UAS facility map provided by the FAA. Now Kitty Hawk put it in here with different colors. And uh, if you see something that has all red on it, I'm going to try to find one for you. Uh, I think there is one... Well, it's not red on Kitty Hawk, it's actually gray. This area right here just means it's not part of land, so you cannot request any flights. Chandler right here and this other one right here, you can't. Now you can see this is the Phoenix Phoenix Airport. We talked about this one in the, in the course. Remember that little infinity-shaped class Bravo airspace? Well, this is it right here. And you can actually request to fly in that airspace. And there's another one right here. So I'm going to go back to Prescott because that's where we want to fly. And uh, right here... I can just add at the bottom, we're going to click add, and then we're going to click request lens authorization. Okay, and once we do this, then it's going to kind of figure out where we are, and then I can move out and find a spot where I want to fly. Now, I'm going to fly around Watson Lake because I love flying around Watson Lake. I'm going to tap on the screen. You have to tap on the screen to get inside of one of these boxes. And here, here you can see I have the green box, I have the yellow box, and the red box. The first one we're going to do is I want to fly in that green area. I want to see green should be pretty good. I can tap on those numbers here and then bring this up. And look at that, it says UAS facility map, permissible altitude for authorization, 400 feet. I can fly in that area up to 400 feet once I get authorization. Yes, you still need to get the authorization. A lot of people ask me, I can just go in there because it's authorized, I'm authorized already. No, you're not. You still have to submit the, the application. Uh, you can also see the weather, by the way. Today's a beautiful day, 78 degrees right here. Almost no wind, almost no gust, perfect visibility. This is where you can see your visibility, by the way. Three statute mile is the lowest we can go. No clouds. Perfect for a flying day. If I go and tap on the window next to it, that yellow box, you can see the yellow box, it's starting to go down. We have 250. If I go to the red box next to it, guess what it's going to be? This is Glassford Hill right here. It's zero feet. I can tap another zero box right here. Zero feet. Can you fly in here? You could but not with this authorization right here. You're going to have to get a special approval in order to do that. Once we go, I'm going to go back right here because I want to fly in that 400 foot uh, area. So once I'm ready to fly in this, in this uh, grid, in this specific grid right here, then I'm going to type, tap on get authorization. Get authorization. And it's asking you right here, do you want to do this as a hobbyist or do you want to do this as a commercial pilot? Well, I'm going to do this under part 107. Um, recreational, I could still do it, same process really. So part 107 right here. And then now it's asking me specifically in this area, where do I want to fly? So I can tap, now this is a bit tricky at first. You have to push on these corners, you have to push and hold. And once you do this, then you can start to move, push and hold, start to move around, and you're gonna draw your area. Push and hold, and move around, okay? And uh, I'm going to show you something. Let's say you wanted to fly also in the next area right here. Now, first off, on the bottom left corner here, it's going to ask you what altitude. I can slide my finger. I'm holding my finger and sliding right now. And I can go all the way to 400 feet. You are eligible to fly up here with approval up to 400 feet. Now, if I start to drag this corner into the next one, now see what happens? We knew it was 250 there. Now, I can't fly up to 400 feet. I'm going to have to go right here to 250. If I try to fly here, it says eligible for further coordination up to 400 feet. This is going to take some approval and some time because somebody has to review this manually. Now, if I wanted to go and fly, even extend this some more and go into the red area, well, now we're in trouble. Well, first off, the flight area is too large. They don't want you to make it too large. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, I know it's too large. And then bring this and bring this one right here. Okay, if I did this, now you notice 
how high do you want to fly? Eligible for further coordination up to 400 feet. So I could ask to fly in that area up to 400 feet. Um, but right now it's not going to be auto automatic. So I can't really do that automatically. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to actually make this a real scenario. Let's say I just want it to be right between these two zones right here. And I'm going to try to fly 250. I'm going to click next. Now it's asking you here, when do you want to do this? I could do this today. And then you can change your duration. So you can tap right here and then change how long you want to fly. I'm going to keep it default for now. Now take a look at the notes. Lens authorization are currently not available for operation more than 90 days in advance. Operation beyond civil twilight. You cannot request to fly at night in here and uh, simultaneous flight in the same area or multiple drone swarm. Okay, we're not doing this. More than one registered aircraft. Well, I only have one. Well, I have several, but I'm only going to be flying one. Click Next. Now it says auto eligible for this area, blah, blah, blah. And I can click Next. And then it's going to ask me to review this area. And then here it's got a bunch of questions. Operator is certified under part 107. You have to do that if you're submitting under part 107. Operator is responsible for operating in compliance with all temporary flight restrictions. I'm going to have to check those. Operator is responsible for operating with all the NOTAMs. Operator is responsible for operating in compliance with the small airspace. And then altitude or absolute value above ground level which shall not be added to the height of any structures. Now remember, we talked about this in class and we said that the 400 foot above the highest obstacle, that is only available in uncontrolled airspace. Here we are in controlled airspace. We cannot do this and we cannot fly 400 feet above a structure. This is only above the ground, natural stuff. Um, this authorization does not constitute a waiver for state or local law. Now, there's none in my state, but not in this area at least. Each authorization corresponds to a single operator controlling at most one aircraft at a time. That is true. And contacting ATC by phone for uh, lens status information may result in the FAA, in the request being rejected by the FAA. Okay. All right. Agree and submit, and then this would go, and I would get a text message. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to fly this flight, and I don't want to uh, overload the system, but agree and submit, and then you'll be good to go. In about 30 seconds, you should be getting an approval, and then you should be ready to go fly your drone. This is all you have to do. It takes a lot longer. It takes, it's a lot shorter than what I just showed you because I'm talking through it, so it should only take you a few minutes to do this. All right. I hope you enjoy this. Mm -hmm.